The information discussed on Pocket Money with Jeff Tarbell is believed to be from reliable sources. However, no responsibility is assumed for inaccuracies. No statement made on this broadcast should be construed as a specific recommendation of a particular investment product. Views expressed are those of the speakers and do not necessarily represent those of CBS Radio. News only is directed. Smiles, everyone. Smiles. And prepare yourself for... Show me the money! Ladies and gentlemen... The radio broadcast experience designed to keep your wallet in top condition. It's Talking Money with Jeff Tarbell. Talking Money. Talking Money. More money, more money, more money. And now entering the studio, your guru for fiscal fitness, Jeff Tarbell. Hey, keep it down. I'm trying to sleep. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? I think I got almost on the verge of that smoker's voice again. How you doing? Someone put out my cigarette. Hey, Chris, how are you? I'm doing great. Good. Good to see you. Glad you could make it in today. We, uh, I, I, yeah, we, we is back. You guys were here. I am back. Where were, were you? I don't know. Messing around. Doing a little skiing. Doing, yeah, just, you know. Farting around, doing whatever I wanted to do, taking a taking a nap, enjoying uh, enjoying a little break. Hey, thank you, thank you, and uh, Brad DeHaven, and who was your other guest? You don't recall? No. Okay, just somebody who showed up at the store, wanted to be on the radio. No, it was um, Troy Milburn. Oh, Troy, he okay. Was president of uh, ADA Consultants. Very good. Yep. So, how'd that I, go? It, it went well, actually. You know, it. I, I I explained to listeners, it's a little different to have a a drug. You know, topic on a talking money show, but <laughs> the station know. is full of drugs, man. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> During break. Oh yeah. But it was, uh, you know, it was a topic that, in terms of prescription drugs and, uh, and abuse of that, and teenagers and, and awareness of it, and and uh, what, what I will tell you is that the number of follow up emails and calls that we got, yeah, were phenomenal. Yeah, I got a lot of those. Even though I wasn't here, the the emails came into me, so I was able to forward those on, and that was Brad DeHaven. So I did post that show. On my the Talking Money Facebook page, so if you want to find last week's show, and it's it's a pretty interesting topic, you're welcome to do that. We will probably replay that uh, down the road a little bit uh, on a Saturday when if I can't be here, we'll play play a segment of that as well. So and you know, it's it, it's a bigger issue than even I think we led people to believe. Just USA Today just had an article this week: DEA aims big uh, big to stem painkiller black market. So apparently, there's pharmacy or uh, pharmacies in in certain parts of the United States, and this one I think was in Florida. Where, um, you know, they look at the certain number of, of pills that each pharmacy yeah, gets. Yeah, abnormal sales. It, exactly. Yeah. And just based on those numbers alone, they, they went in, did some investigation, and uh, shut them down. Plus, so. the brownie sales out front were off the chart, <laughs> so that was doing good. So. so we start every show with our normal routine. This is Talking Money. My name is Jeff Tarbell, and we always start off. Like, did you forget last week? About the, the thirty seconds from the mind of Christopher Law, did you? I did. We you just did. had to bleep it out. So. <laughs> you, see, you did it. But I was, it was a little a, too angry. It was yeah. all on delay. Huh? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. he was ready to get bleeped. Let's go with the more calm and sincere Christopher Law. Okay, a couple of weeks ago, we have Ryan Braun who got off for testing positive for uh, for, for steroids yeah. in baseball, and then he comes out and says. The truth finally came out. Look, I never tested positive. Well, you did test positive. You're just cleared because they say that evidence was collected wrongly. If I go down the street and I rob a liquor store and then someone doesn't do their job, they don't get the right evidence, there is a technicality, I get off. It doesn't mean that the liquor store didn't get robbed. It just means I get off on a technicality. So Brian, so Ryan Braun, just shut your mouth. We don't want to hear from you anymore. Just go away, and I hope you win the – I hope you don't win anything. I hope you go – just go quiet in the night. He just bleeped uh. himself. He bleeped himself. I almost went too far right there. So Ryan Braun, just shut up and go away. We don't want to hear from you anymore. Now, with all, with all the big news this week, Chris, you didn't. You're not even going to get into the fact that we might have given the major double bird to both Anaheim and Seattle by a little, a little uh, pending vote from the city council. So that wasn't going to be. Was that was not it, done yet. Not done yet. True. Not done yet. March sixth. March sixth is is the uh, the final final vote, huh? So this was interesting because I, I, um, I, you know, I didn't, I didn't think that news would have quite quite the effect on me that it that it did in in a positive manner because it was you know you still get so used to 
everything being kind of uh, downer and, you know, jobs are down and house prices are down and we're going to lose our team, we're going to lose our arena, blah, blah, And you kind of get into that mindset, you just assume that it will happen. So I give a, you know, a, hu- a huge kudos to whomever and whoever was involved and certainly the mayor and everybody else if they can pull that together and make it work. And you already start to see, and I'll tell you what, in the second hour today, uh, a good buddy of mine lives in San Diego and um, was down in San Diego prior to the Petco Park being put, uh, erected in kind of the downtown gas lamp district. And I asked him to call in in the second hour today just to give us a little anecdotal evidence of what happened around that area and what they saw come out of, of that park. And there's st- there are still people down there who believe that they shouldn't have done it. And the people that believe that it didn't return the kind of investment from that single source that it should have. But then you look around the area, and that, that was an area that was, well, I'll let him describe it later, but an area that was not real great and now is a booming capital area. But uh, this came out of the, uh, the Business Journal this week. If, in fact, city, Sacramento city leaders are, are armed and able to put together a new arena and facility, um, the group that's putting together the region's bid for the 2022 Winter Olympics is already going to include that building in their plans for their bid. I mean, that building could be a major hub for a, a lot of the inter, you know, the inside events, the skating, the different things that go on inside. Curling. Curl, yeah, curling, the curling. So uh, you start looking around now and you say, man, not only do we – Maybe keep some basketball here. Or maybe we get some get better concerts here. But if, can you imagine the 2022 Winter Olympics in Sacramento, California? I mean, that would be phenomenal, phenomenal event. So, of course, that's there's a long way from here to there. The building's not here yet, and we don't have a bid for the Olympics. But you're in the discussion. You're in the discussion. I mean, that would be an enormous uh, event for our area. So that would be fantastic. And I say right now, Chris, I say we just put our foot on the throttle. We make a bid to bring the Anaheim Ducks here. We take them right. <laughs> we bring hockey right here. That would be awesome. I mean, you talk about a turnaround and just a smack in your face. That would be. I, I'm going for hockey. Are you in? City council writes a letter. We have a great facility now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we don't have the older 1990s facility that you currently yeah, are in. Yeah, dear dear Ducks owners, we have a uh, we're scheduling a tour for you. I mean, wouldn't that be just the ultimate jam? And that would be awesome. And I think we should go for hockey here. I think Sacramento would be a killer hockey town. Primarily because everybody in Sacramento is from somewhere else, and they are all from areas that grew up with hockey, other than myself, who likes hockey and barely sits the ice. So, anyway, that was a lot, a lot of good news this week. I was ex- excited to hear all those things, and I hope it continues on. Um, yet I, I do want to uh, say a belated happy anniversary or early happy anniversary to my wife. It, it is our 20th anniversary. It was on Leap Year Day, which was Wednesday, and we spent it, as all couples do, in a romantic way on their 20th anniversary. <laughs> I was in Tahoe skiing and she was home with the kids. <laughs> so, <laughs> exactly how the successful marriage stays together is um, you need to stay apart in order to stay happy. So, so wouldn't that be your fifth anniversary? It was, in fact, our fifth <laughs> anniversary, technically, yes. He's such a cheap bastard. And, you know? and they are extremely expensive anniversaries every five years. <laughs> and not only does this one fall on a um, – not only does this anniversary fall on our 20th anniversary, but my – Firstborn daughter turns 16 next week. So this whole thing is just starting to be – I actually probably need to just shut the radio and get back to work right now. So if you need a loan, please call now. We'll take your application <laughs> on the air. And I'm only taking applicants who are borrowing at least a billion dollars or so. I need, to, I need to kind of knock it all out in one fell swoop. So we're going to do a little nice trip to Hellwig today. Actually going to go up and check out the uh, Hellwig Winery this afternoon. We're going to take some friends and Nick and uh, go up and check it out and see if we can uh, get a little wine going. Hey, you know what I did expect – did find out this week, and I and I wasn't kidding when I said that I was up in Tahoe. My wife was down here. Um, we had one phenomenal snow dump on Wednesday and Thursday, so much so that I did something that I don't normally do. I brought in. I went skiing, one of them, and I stayed up on my feet on for the most part. But I brought in two pair of passes to Sierra Tahoe with me into the studio this morning because the snow was so good, and they have had such a ridiculously bad season up there. I just hope that everybody. This weekend, we'll get out and get up there. But if you are interested in going skiing, I guess you want to go today or tomorrow, and you are in the area of 5244 Madison Avenue at the corner of Madison and Hemlock, if you give me a call uh, in the first hour today, 339-1140 or 1-800-920-1140, I've got two pair of passes. You can stop by the studio and pick them up if you want to get some skiing in today or tomorrow. Got them in studio. So, But you got to call in and give us your name. We'll hold your name for the first two, and you got to come pick them up. 
So is this for two winners then? A pair of tickets yeah, for each? Yeah, pair of tickets for each. And uh, there's no no blackouts on them. Let me see. These, um, some of these times are not good for Saturdays. Let me see here. This doesn't say that. This just says you can't ski on the holidays, which are already passed. So these are good. These are good, ready to go. So if you want to uh, get some skiing in this weekend and you want to go to Sierra Tahoe and you want to do it on me, 339-1140, We'll hold these two pair for someone who can come by, two winners can come by and pick them up from the studio. So, And we're packing heat in here, so but don't you, try to play any games with us. But we you are have loaded to, for bear. We, you have to pick them up by 11 o'clock. Yeah, you got to pick them up by 11 o'clock. Otherwise, Nick takes them, and you'll never see them again. Nice. So uh, we'll hold those off to the side there. If you want to do that, give us a call. I guess you can text us if you want to come down as well, but probably better off to call and give us your name. So we'll, we'll hold those out there. Did I get it all covered? We got everything? You did. Okay. You did. Hey, got a question for you. Sure. Uh, wh- how much do you think buying the name iPad cost? Just buying the name so iPad. You, so, so Apple bought it from somebody? Uh-huh. Okay. <sighs> well, if they, if, they, if they did it as a percentage of sales, they would have been smarter. But I will, I'll say $10 million bucks. Came in at about $55,000. So what happened was there was this company called ProView Electrics or Electronics, and they had actually had the iPad name. Okay, and uh, Apple came in and, and purchased the uh, purchased the name from him for fifty five thousand dollars, and and uh, I guess kind of the problem with it is this: they 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 really didn't disclose the nature of what they were going to do with the iPad name. It was, uh, hey, we're going to use it for business and for this for this product. Yeah. Well, all of a sudden the product took off and became huge. So now, guess what's happening? Seller remorse. Yep. Yep. Re- grab that article there. What, yeah. what does it say? Uh, let's see here. Uh, so they're they're suing iPad. Right. And not explain this. Okay. With oppression, fraud, and malice. So basically, they're, they're just mad they didn't make more money. Right, right. So, so uh, when the, when, in 2010, when this product took off, they uh, they realized, oh, crap. We uh, we should have got more money out of it. Right. Yeah, ProView asked the court for damage in addition to rescinding the earlier agreement for the iPad name and stop Apple from using it from its products. Good luck with that. Right, right. Apple's so I'm, n- I'm going to sell you this name for 55000 and then when that name becomes huge, I'm going to sue you because you didn't tell me how you were going to use a name. So if I bought a um, a burger store and you were doing a hundred thousand a year in sales, and I went out there and kicked butt, and, d- and I'm doing a million dollars a year in sales, you want to rescind the deal because I did a better job of promoting the name than you did. Right. Yeah. Apple's worth more than like most countries right now. That's a true story. There's <laughs> right. like very few countries that actually have a net worth higher than Apple. Good luck with that in your fifty-five thousand pound British pounds. So. All right, we got a lot of a lot of fun stuff and a lot of things to cover today too. Let's take our first break if we don't mind, and uh, we have a quiz question there somewhere. What do you do with it? You do. I do. Yeah, the one. I don't know where it is. Well, here here's a quiz question okay. question for you. Uh, we hear about Stockton running into uh, potential bankruptcy issues, right? But there's another city. There was two more. One of them was Hercules, which I think is down south somewhere, right? But there was a local one, right? Local local city, uh, it, Northern California, on that verge. is on the verge of bankruptcy. Not, What's the city? And not Stockton. Right. 339-1140. 1-800-920-1140. Think north of Sacramento. Yeah, they've had a serious tank in their, in their real estate taxes, too. 339-1140. 1-800-920-1140. Or you can text us at 441140. My name's Jeff Tarbell. That's Nick Perjanic. That's Christopher Laud. And this is time to take a break, Jack. Jack.